You can start it whenever you want. Okay. Well, folks, um, just been kind of easing along with your knuckle here. And uh, somebody wanted to know how I rigged this pack saddle for the back cinch instead of a bridge. And so I'm going to show you what I did. And I want you to watch the expression on this horse's head while I do this. And you notice he's not tied hard. He just got to where I trying to keep his head from swinging around both directions. And he's getting broke to hobbles because that's what a spade bed horse does. He stands and hobbles. That way anywhere we go we can just step off and hobble them and they'll stand there without getting in trouble with the bridle. And when they're done, you just kind of lay your rein over the horn, and that's how it's done on a spade bit horse. In the early days, they didn't have halters, by the way. And um, I knew a horse trader at Sanders, Arizona. His name was Thorny Best. And I used to haul horses for him 100 years ago. And he called a halter. A hackamore, that's what he called it. <laughs> oh, he's got a kick out of that. Now, with hobbles on, that's how tight you make the cinch. Period. You don't suck a, a cinch down on any kind of animal with hobbles on. That's betrayal. Now, over time, He's going to figure out all he has to do is stand. This is just youth now. There, now that's enough for getting this done right there. Once again, you'll notice the back cinch doesn't get messed with right now. I haven't started actually packing him yet. and I'm going to pony him a while. with the rope I told you about for getting him to lead off of a field. And then I'll... Now, here's the deal. This is a latigo strap. And all I did was screw it into the, to the back of the pack saddle so it doesn't slip. It's got a screw on each side. Now, as you can do the math, you can tell that that lines up perfectly for holding that cinch where it belongs. And that's how I get away with this. When I pull the cinch under him, I push towards the back because I want this hobble strap between the two cinches to be straight. I don't want it looping down. So there's the first part. Here's the second part. Now that's it. Because this colt's being schooled, that's as much as the cinch gets. So I'm gonna untrack him. And then I'll tighten the back cinch for him. As we all know, there's a term called letting down. And I'll be able to tell when he lets down and gets to where this isn't a problem. Watch the left hind leg, there. I noticed that it stepped right to here. When he's good about this, it's gonna step all the way over to there. Now those of you who've been around this for a long time, we've all seen the big cloud of dust and the big rack and all that. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. I've already been there and seen that. And figured out that really wasn't all that smart. Make sure my strap is straight. Set it back. Raise it up another hole. 
Both pins are in. And that's actually how it works. Now, if you don't have the strap on the breast collar straight, in other words, you don't want a big loop in that breast collar strap. This is how this whole thing works. Breast collar connected to the front cinch. Front cinch connected to the back cinch. Between the three of them, that's what makes this whole thing work. If you didn't have the breast collar, this wouldn't work. So now he just gets used to wearing it. And I found that this cinch, it doesn't, even the back one doesn't have to be very tight. It just seems to work really nice. Just for the sake of knowing, I can get underneath a pack outfit and turn this whole thing loose pretty easy if I had to. There's nothing more disheartening with a full pack on and you can't get to your latigos. That's not a good feeling. But so right now, I want you to notice this is how tight this front one is. Okay? That's all the tighter it needs to be as far as I'm concerned. This is how tight the back one is. And once again, the way the buckles line up, that's the end of the ribs. And the way I figured it out was to put the buckles right towards the end of the spring of rib. So when the mule's moving, his ribs move back there. They don't move up in the front. And the reason I'm telling you that story is because that's going to give me a chance, like a shock absorber, whereas up here, if you cut them in half, that's how you get them sore. God made the Rocky Mountains for packers just so they could balance their load. So you don't have to have your cinches cutting them in half. Do you watch him step? There. There. That's what's going to make this work. All right, now, as usual, he's not going to get ponied on the, around the flat up there in the round crow. He's going to get ponied showing him America. And that way, everything goes up and down and up and down. And it's no different than hanging a bit on him. He's going to get used to balancing. Then I'll just ease in a load. I'll start packing one block on each side. So this is how it works for this horse. Now, he spends time... Well, just come with me and I'll show you how he spends a lot of time. This is what it looks like. The holder's up high enough so that the horse can't eat it. Here's a wrap. Here's another wrap. Now what you got to know is that with this bite on there, that's what, it doesn't get down where you can't get it undone if you have to. That's what it looks like. If I give him too much rope, he can't stand prosperity and he'll get in trouble. Okay. Since he's right here in camp, I can keep an eye on him pretty close. And he can move around a little bit and get used to this. And I'm getting him broke to hobble because when I start taking him cowboying with me, he's gonna be getting hobbled to the trailer until I get back from making a circle so he won't learn to paw. Oh, 
That's what it's going to look like for you. Now, I did this in increments, as you know. He got broke to hobble a long time ago, started. So you don't just take a horse over and do this. Some lady got a hold of us about, said she was going to take her three-year-old stud colt to the horse show and wanted to hobble it to the trailer. Well, I think that's probably asking for the biggest wreck of the century. And there's several reasons why. One of them is, is that if you've got a stud, the first thing you got to know is they're a beast before they're a horse. That's the way they're designed. So now you go to a horse show, and little Miss Emily's going to lead her bear up to see the beautiful stallion. And, oh, can I pet him? So what's this stud horse going to do? When you go around a horse show, you got to really pay attention to the people around who's going to be there. So my answer to you is no, no, and no. And just for the sake of visiting, a really good stud coat makes a really, really nice gilding. I'm just saying. So on that note, i got to tell you something over here now. Now, folks, uh, we all know about this virus deal, and it's not a good thing, but uh, I want to tell you that our friend Boyd is on the Navajo Res. He's on the medical side of it, which means he's in a pretty dangerous situation. And if you haven't figured it out yet, is that the family unit on the Res is pretty tight. I mean, it's borderline Waltons. So he's got a mother that I think's in her high 90s and a sister and kids and they all try to take care of each other and they're doing what they can and so he can't be getting close to them a lot so i just want to tell him how proud we are of him for what he's doing to help fight this thing he's part of the medical deal and also on that note i might as well go there because there's a, the northwest corner of the reservation there's big reservoir big dam big lake and there's a town called Page. And what I'm getting at, I'll make this simple, is that the Navajo Res has been on the news a lot lately, and that doesn't happen because they're forgotten people, literally. So while, it, while you're on the news, I would like to talk to the young people on the Res because they're very, very, there's some really sharp people up there. And get on the computer because we all established the fact that 30% of the people on the Res don't have any running water, okay. If you look at the northwest corner of your reservation, it's touching water. Okay, that water should be yours. Period. Water runs downhill. You start up in that northwest corner and go diagonally across that state, and everybody can have water because they did it in Australia. So I know it can be done here with all these geniuses we got. The way I think you're going to get it done is that Washington is no help. Window Rock is no help because they'd have had it done by now if they were. So you get on a computer and you go from Page, Arizona, and think recreational, and that lake itself is how many thousands of people come there and use it. And what I'm getting at is I really believe in multiple use, but I literally mean in multiple use. So that means everybody. Okay, here's how you get water on the rest. You make a statement because you're young, you got the energy, and you're smart. So you get on your computers and you go from Page, Arizona to the Mexican border and find out how much of that Colorado River water is going to golf courses, swimming pools, and recreational items. Now you get the gallons figured out and then do the math on how many people need water on the res and how much it would take for them to have the amount of water all the rest of us have every day. And you're going to find out that there's plenty of water available and that the elite don't need it. So just do that math and then you can say there's this many gallons being wasted for recreation and there's this many people that need water in the United States of America and haven't had it. And this has been going on for 150 years. Okay, get that math done and then stand up and do something about it because numbers is what's going to get this done. Numbers of people standing 
dropping a pump in the lake up there, whatever you're going to do. You got solar power, you got everything at your fingertips now in technology to make this work. So I'm no genius, but I do know if you skip all the paperwork and all the politics, you can actually get water to these people, no problem, because that water is yours. It's yours. Don't let them tell you any different. All right, folks, there is one thing that's kind of ironic to me is that it's world class, and I think Tiger Woods will probably be getting in on it, but there's a deal called Res Golf. And the people on the Res made their own golf course, and it's not green. And they're just fine. They have a lot of fun. Fun, imagine that. So you can't tell me that you can't have a golf course and it, it doesn't have to be emerald green. So just think about Res Golf and make it catch on and go all the way across the world. Adios.